Hi, my name is Dan Lo. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use IAR to write a simple program to toggle the LED, turn on or off LED. So let's first start IAR embedded workbench. And by the way, here I use the uh, uh, MSP430 launch pad. Okay. So once I start IAR workbench, let me adjust the, the window size a little bit. <coughs> so first of first of all, I'm gonna start a project. So I go project, create a new project. And I select the tool chain MS430, that's the only option you can have. And then in in the project template here, I select the SM, which means I want to create the assembly project. And then I click OK. And I'm gonna put this project to uh, drive C and then and some test here, okay. So I'm gonna name this project uh, my first project and click save, okay. Then the uh, the IAR will create a template, uh, uh, a template uh, assembly code for us, and then. This file name is sm.s43. Okay. And don't modify this yet. I'm gonna walk you through you know each line of code. Okay. So the first statement, okay. Well and the first element is here. It includes the msb430.h. That's the header file. That contains all the <coughs> controls for the MSB430 and the semicolon followed by something <coughs> that's the uh, comments. Okay, so this comments will comment on whatever this is doing. Okay, then the second step is again nice name, man, and that's a module name, so we're gonna name. Uh, this file, the major name, the module name main, M A I N. Okay. Then we're gonna make it public. Make the main label. This is a table main, public. Uh, so, uh, people from uh, not people, uh, the program from outside this module will be able to see it. And since this name gonna be a label, so we have a main label here as an entry point okay and then followed by org 0 ff feh that is a beginning address of the MSC 430 uh, if you want, want you to run a program in other words this this location have to be the beginning address of your program so ffe uh, FFE is the very last word okay, in the address space. And the DC sustain in it, uh, again, that was set the reset back to two in it. So if you hit the reset button here, the reset button, there's a reset button here, okay, uh, which is uh, here, that's a reset button. And there's another button, the P1.3 here. Okay, and there's LED here. There's a gray one and there's a green one. Okay. So when you place this reset button, then the program will start from init. Okay, which is here. Okay. Then RCG C stack, oh, that's a stack segment. Okay. And the RCG code. That will be the starting of code segment. Okay. All uh, these are used for uh, all the purposes, and I'm not going to detail about this. So, uh, visit, visit, visit this uh, later. Okay. 
So in the init, uh, basically you move the step under. Okay, you set up your cell stack to the uh, uh, sum of default value. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, in the main, first is no op, no operation. Okay. And the second statement here, I will stop the timer using this control. So this this is the control value. I move to the control register to control the watchdog timer. Watchdog timer is a timer inside the MSB430. Uh, since we don't use its function, we have to stop it. Otherwise, it causes some problem for our program. And the next to it is the jump dollar sign. That will be a uh, infinite loop. And this end is not. It's a uh, assembly directive. It's not an instruction. Uh, it's a tail the assembly that doesn't stop of the program. So anything after that will not be interpreted or compiled. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna put something right after the statement that stops watchdog timer. Okay, here, and I put a comment. Say this. Uh, I said no. I don't. I don't want to put a comment here. Well. Uh, since the uh, the LED is connected to the P 1.0 okay, in the MSB for in the large pad board here, so I'm going to uh, set the port 1.0 to the output mode. So the best way to do that is move. Okay, uh, you can also use other command, but move is the easy way by default. And since the P 1 out is a byte. Uh, therefore, we need to use the byte version of move, so we we'll move that B. And then we're gonna put a uh, one there in the P one dot zero. Okay. Uh, we we'll use P P one out or P one dirt. Okay. So P one dirt will set a direction. Of uh, the <coughs> direction of the <coughs> P port one and zero x one indicate the zero speed of the P one dirt. Okay, so we're gonna set it to be the output mode. Okay, so that was set uh, P one dot zero. To output mode. Okay. If you don't set it, it's gonna be the input mode. Okay. So after that, we uh, um, set it to zero. Set it. Set the uh, P one dot zero to zero. Okay. Again, we we'll do mode and then zero x zero. Okay. Zero is just means set everything to zero. Okay. And then uh, P1 out. Okay. So let's try this first and let's see uh, what happened. Okay. So once I have these two lines of code, then I can run it. But before I run it, I need to set the project. So right click on the, my first project, select options. And in the general option target, we need to set a correct device, otherwise, it's not going to work. So in the device, technically select uh, G. Since mine is a uh, 2553, so I selected MFC 430 G2553. Okay. And then in the debugger, I need to change the driver to be the FED debugger. If you don't set it, it's going to be running in the simulator. Not the hardware itself. Okay, so as I said, the FEP debugger, the program will be running on the MSC430 launch pad. So after that, now I can run it. Uh, it asks to save this workspace. So give you a name, say, then load, okay, and then save it. So this is the workspace that contains all the projects. So at this point, I, uh, the debugger, stop at the init. Okay, so we can step through it, click step over. Okay, 
and run the next one okay and then step again okay now we want to see the p1 dirt content so what I'm going to do I'm going to view our uh, registers okay and the budget registers you can select the CPU registers or the PO1 registers so I select the PO1 registers after I select that I can now see the P1 out here and then the P1 dirt here okay here the P1 P1 dirt now it's all zero, right? So you just step through it, then I should set the P1 dirt to be one. Okay. So now P1 dot zero is one. So I set the mode to be output. And then again, next, well, output uh, P1 to zero. So now everything is one, right? So you see the LED, LED now is, is, is one. And on the launch pad here, okay, LED. P1.0 is red, LED is, is 0. Uh, it's, it's, it's on, okay? Because it's on. So once I step through this, the next statement, you will see turn off. Okay, now it turn off, and P1.0 is 0. zero. Everything is 0, basically. Okay? So that's basic you know, operation about the MSC430. And now, say if I want to. Uh, Toggle the LED. Okay. Toggle LED means you know, I run through it and then toggle it on and off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I can <coughs> change the code to uh, stop it. Okay. Go back to the editing mode. So instead of the uh, move, I can use exclusive or. Okay. And then exclusive or zero x one that will tackle the p one dot zero. Okay. If it's on now, it's off. It's off now. It's on. Okay. Have this. Is. So okay. P one dot zero. Okay. okay. So save it. And we can we can try this. Okay. Again, try this. So now LED is off. So we'll step through it. Okay, set the direction. And now it's toggle. Okay. So right now it's off, right? If you step through it, now it's on. LED lights up. Okay. And then you go to the jump dollar sign, that's some looping layer. Okay. Now if I want to change a little bit more to jump back. Instead of itself, jump to the line that will toggle the LED. So I say loop here. Okay. Then instead of jump dollar sign, I say jump loop. So that will make an infinite loop here. And then I'll toggle LED back and forth. So let's try this. Okay. So step through it. So now LED is off. If I run this guy, LED is on. And then it jump loop. It will go to the loop again. Okay, you have step through it again, you will turn off the LED. So this loop will turn on and off the LED. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, MSV430 launch pad. Uh, uh, this version, the P1.6 is connected to a green LED. So if you would like to turn on the green LED instead, so all we need to do is we need to set the P1.6. Okay, 1.6, which is uh, uh 1.6, which is uh zero, zero one zero zero. And then zero 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 zero. Okay, so zero one zero zero. 
not four. So we said four zero. Okay. Now I toggle P one dot uh, six. Okay. Now we green LED. So if I move direction, I change direction for one. Okay. Now we we'll both change the uh, the set the uh, output mode for P1.6 and P1.0 okay. so after that now I change the 40 40 that will be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is the P1.6 okay, will be toggled so now let's run this to see if we can toggle the green LED so step through it Now the LED is on now. The green LED. Now if I run it again, LED is off. Okay. And keep going. Then uh the red LED which is P1.0, we didn't touch it. Yet, so um uh, let's just turn it off. Or instead let's turn everything off first and then toggle uh toggle and let's quit a pattern that toggle uh red LED green LED alternatively, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, clear so this will clear turn off both LEDs okay? and then after that, I'm going to create another one that will toggle. Okay. Um toggle. Hold on. I use this for one to toggle LED. Uh, green and red LED. But uh, I turn the uh, the red LED okay on first. Turn off green LED and uh, turn on red LED okay so that should create a path and then the red one turn on first and then it changed to the green one and then red one off okay let's try it and run it so now we set the direction after that, we turn on the red one, good, and then we tackle. So now it's green. Then tackle it. Then it's gonna be red again, and then green again. So that will tackle red and green LED. Okay. So that concludes this um video, and hope you enjoy. Have a good day.